So you're trying to decide whether to vacation in Punta Cana or Cancun. Well, in this video, I'm going to go over the similarities and the differences of both destinations. Number one is a similarity, and that is they both have a lot of all-inclusive resorts to choose from because they specialize in the all-inclusive resort experience. Now, this doesn't mean it's the only way to experience these two destinations. Both Punta Cana and Cancun have a ton of Airbnbs and hotels that are non all-inclusive. I personally have only done an all-inclusive resort experience in Cancun and Punta Cana, so I can't really speak about the other experience. I just prefer that freedom of mind when you're on vacation. I love the all-inclusive experience. So in my opinion, it is a great way to experience both destinations. And there's a ton of resorts to choose from. It leads me to the second similarity, again, about the all-inclusive resorts, and that is you really need to do your research before booking. So Punta Cana and Cancun both have a ton of different all-inclusive resorts, and it can really range not only in price, but also quality. The cost of the all-inclusive resort experience is also very similar between Punta Cana and Cancun. And after staying at over 20 all-inclusive resorts in both destinations, I have found that it is also true in both places that the more you spend per night, the better quality experience that you're going to have. Now, I know that sounds obvious, but it's very easy to get drawn into those really low prices per night because it's all inclusive. You're trying to save some money and you're thinking like, how bad could it be? And trust me, I know because I've stayed at them and let me tell you, it can be pretty bad. So make sure you do your research and pay just a little bit more per night to get a better experience. Number three is another similarity and also kind of a difference. And it's pretty obvious that the native language in both countries is Spanish. However, one difference is in the way that they speak Spanish. So in the Dominican Republic, it's very, very fast. And sometimes they run their words together. And for me personally, it's harder to understand than when I'm in Mexico and I do um, understand a lot of Spanish and I speak a little Spanish. So I just find it easier to speak Spanish and understand Spanish in Mexico. With that being said, don't worry if you don't speak Spanish because another similarity is that in both Punta Cana and Cancun, you can get by on English alone pretty well. Number four is a similarity for me, but it might be a difference for you. And that is how long it takes to get to each destination. So um, I fly out of the New Jersey area and both are about a three and a half hour nonstop flight. But one difference with the flights, at least it is for me, is that the cost of the flight is usually higher to go to Punta Cana than it is to Cancun. Number five, let's talk about the airports. Now I do full videos about both airport experiences. So you can check those out. But just real quick, I would say it is definitely a difference. The Cancun airport is a little bit more updated. It's a lot quicker to get through immigrations and customs than in Punta Cana. So in Cancun, they actually now have the e-gates, which is making it a lot quicker to go through immigrations. Um, and just in general, you can tell that they are really dedicated to getting people in and out of their airport as soon as possible so that people want to come back and have a good experience. Versus when you arrive to Punta Cana, it's definitely slower paced. You feel that island vibe right away. You can see that they're maybe a little bit behind the times with the technology, but it is a lot more fun. There's music playing. And in general, again, it's just a whole different vibe. But what is similar about both airports is that you should definitely arrange transportation from the airport to the resort or wherever you're going ahead of time. Because if not, you will be bombarded by taxi drivers, transportation companies trying to get your business. You can get overcharged and get scammed really easily. It's happened to us. So in the description, I will put the companies that we use. In Cancun, we use Nacho Tours. And in Punta Cana, we use Diamond Tours. So I don't want to get too much more into the airport since I do those full videos on both of them. So make sure you check them out. Number six, we're going to talk a little geography. And I probably should have started with this. Most of it you already know. So it's not meant to insult your intelligence. It's meant to make a point later because there are some major differences 
that really um, contribute to the different experiences in each location. So Cancun is located in the southeast part of Mexico in the Yucatan Peninsula in the state of Quintana Roo. And Mexico is huge. And it's actually 40 times larger than the Dominican Republic, which is where Punta Cana is located. So the Dominican Republic is a Caribbean island. It shares its island with Haiti. And the reason why this is all important is because there's definitely different vibes, I would say, in Dominican Republic versus Cancun. So Cancun, being a part of the much larger country of Mexico, has a more fast-paced vibe than Punta Cana, which is located on a Caribbean island. So there's definitely that island vibe. Things are slower paced. Now, I'm not saying that you're in New York City when you're in Cancun. I mean, it's definitely a vacation vibe, but that's one noticeable difference that I've seen. And I would say where this difference comes up the most is our number seven, and that is the service. So the service in Mexico in general is quicker than the service in Punta Cana. So in Punta Cana, they are on island time. Like I said, they're on a Caribbean island. So it takes a little bit longer sometimes to get drinks and get food. I don't think the service is necessarily any better in Cancun, but in terms of the time, you do get a little bit faster service sometimes in Cancun. However, the last time that we went to Punta Cana was just a few months ago. We stayed at the Sanctuary Cap Cana, and that was not the case at this resort. So I think it also just kind of depends on the level resort that you're in, but it's definitely one thing that I've noticed during my years of travel. But hey, we're on vacation, so we need to slow down, relax, unwind, get away from that fast paced world. So this should definitely not be a factor when you're trying to decide between the two locations. I don't wanna get any hate comments. It was just an observation. Number eight is regarding the food. And a lot of people say that the food is better in Cancun than in Punta Cana. Now, I personally not sure if I agree with this. I have been to Cancun more and I've gone off the resort to some really nice restaurants and have had amazing meals, which I haven't done in Punta Cana yet. So I don't think it's really fair to compare the both. For me, in my experience, it was very similar at the all-inclusive resort. They had a lot of similar choices at the buffets for the a la carte restaurants. So I thought it was a similarity. But what about the drinks? So number nine is all about the cocktails. And in my personal experience, I think this is a similarity. In the different all-inclusive resorts that I've been to in both destinations, they have a ton of different options. The bartenders know how to make basically anything that you want. And again, it really just depends on the level of the all-inclusive resort that you go to. So if you go to a higher end all-inclusive resort, they're going to have a better selection of liquors. The major difference between the two destinations is that Mexico is well known for tequila and Dominican Republic is well known for rum. So in Mexico, you usually get a better margarita and in the Dominican Republic, you're getting better rum drinks. Number 10 is about safety and people always ask us, is it safe to travel to Cancun or Punta Cana? In my personal experience, I have never had an issue at either destination and I feel equally safe traveling to Cancun as I do to Punta Cana. I know there's a lot in the media, especially about Cancun, about you know the cartels and even sometimes in the Dominican Republic. And in fact, in both destinations, we've gone downtown to their clubs in Cancun, Playa de Carmen, and downtown Punta Cana, and had an amazing time and always felt very safe. With that being said, you always have to exercise precaution when you travel and there's always risks. Just like even nowadays, there's risks going anywhere here in the United States. I personally have not felt safer in one destination over the other. I know there's many people that do feel differently about this. And if this is one of the factors that you're looking into to try to choose a specific destination, honestly, I think it's going to have the same risk factors with either destination that you choose. So kind of along the same lines of safety, number 11 is all about excursions. And I think this is a similarity between both Punta Cana and Cancun, and that is there is so much to explore off the resort. And I know a lot of people are nervous to do so because of the safety factor, but there's so many safe ways to do it. You can do a group tour, a guided tour, and both destinations have so many beautiful sites that you don't wanna miss out on while you're visiting there. Now, we use a company called Viator.com. We're actually partners with them, but we only became partners with them 
after using their service to book quite a few excursions and just loving the experience. So I will put the link to their website in the description below, but basically they have tons of different options. It's all different tour companies. So you can read the reviews. You can see which tour company it is that is offering it. It's just a great way and a safe way to book excursions. Number 12 is a difference, and this is a newer development, and that is about smoking. So if you are a smoker, this is going to be very relevant for you. So in January, 2023, Mexico passed a smoking ban in all public places, including the beach. So it's causing a little chaos with the tourism industry because not all resorts are enforcing it and there's kind of some confusion about what it exactly means. Some people are saying that they were still able to smoke wherever they wanted. Some people were very frustrated because they couldn't smoke at all. So the suggestion would be just to do your research ahead of time, maybe call the resort in the Cancun um, area, if that's where you're looking to go, to see what they are doing to enforce these laws. Now, so far as of this video, which is May, 2023 in Punta Cana, um, it is still the same laws where you can smoke on beaches in public places for the most part Like you can't smoke in the airport or things like that I don't think but you can smoke on the beach and at the resorts and lastly, let's talk about the currency in both locations so one similarity is that the local currency in both destinations are called pesos what's different is the exchange rate so one US dollar equals about 18 pesos in Cancun and about 54 pesos in Dominican Republic. And again, the exchange rate always changes. So don't hold me to the exchange rate. You always want to look that up. So even though it's a large difference, you really can't compare it because it's very different in both countries, the pesos and the value. And so not necessarily that you're getting more for your money in the Dominican Republic. It's just a whole different value when it comes to the currency. But the good news is, and this is one similarity, is that the US dollar is widely accepted everywhere in both locations. So you really don't even need to exchange your dollars into pesos or worry about any of that and the dollar is very strong and you can use it to tip and pay for almost everything. Again, my only suggestion is that you do know the exchange rate. So that way, if you do go off the resort or if you do some shopping and they're telling you what something um, costs in pesos, you know what the conversion is because sometimes they will charge you more with US dollars, especially when you're shopping and doing things like that. So just know the exchange rate before you go. Since we're talking about currency, it's a great time to mention tipping. And tipping is definitely accepted in both destinations. And I know it causes a lot of controversy whenever I talk about tipping, because in some countries, tipping is just not part of the culture. However, in both countries, in general, the workers rely on tips as part of their wage. Since the US dollar is widely accepted, you can tip in the US dollar or the Canadian dollar as well. And a little does go a long way. And I know some countries do not have a tipping culture. So people get very frustrated when they say it's an all-inclusive resort and then some people are tipping and they feel like they have to. But my philosophy has always been if I'm going into another country, I want to immerse myself in their culture as much as possible, respect their culture, and tipping is definitely a part of the culture in both destinations. And a little does go a long way, so you don't have to give a lot, even a dollar or two to the bartenders when you order drinks, three to five dollars when you have dinner, and they will appreciate whatever you can give them. And I wanted to mention one more thing before I end the video because I forgot to talk about climate in the geography section. And the climate is very similar in both destinations. It is a tropical climate and it's usually warm and they have rainy seasons, which is usually in the hurricane season. So that's very similar. And the best time of year to go to these destinations are pretty much the same. I would say December through April is when you're gonna get the best weather, the driest weather. But with that being said, since it is a tropical climate, you can get spotty rainstorms. You can get rain for days sometimes. So it is mother nature. It is hard to predict, but they do have similar climates. The one thing that I've noticed that is different is the Dominican Republic is definitely more humid and damp. 
So when you are in your room, you can kind of feel that dampness a lot in your clothes and sometimes even on the furniture areas like that, just because of the humidity. Okay, yes, now finally the video is coming to an end and which destination then is better, Punta Cana or Cancun? And honestly, in my opinion, I love both equally. And the only reason why we have been to Cancun more is because they have more flights. It tends to be a little bit more affordable and we do travel a lot. And during COVID, it was easier just to travel in and out of Mexico than it was Dominican Republic. Most importantly, make sure you check out all of the other videos that we've done on Cancun and Punta Cana. Many of the subjects I talked about here, I go into more detail in another video. So I will list those in the description as well. And hopefully you will be able to travel to both destinations. But if you are trying to decide between one or the other, then the first place I would start looking is the flights. Cause sometimes that can be a deciding factor for you, depending on the time of year that you want to go. Then also check out the videos that I did for first timers. I did one for Cancun and Punta Cana. And then finally start looking into resorts and what's important to you and prices and things like that. And that might help narrow down your choice. Please add anything into the comments if you've been to both locations, if I missed anything, if there's something in particular you love about Cancun or you love about Punta Cana, we'd love to hear about it in the comments. And I do answer all comments and questions. We hope you like and subscribe to our channel and keep following us at Three Days and Trace Noches while we keep bringing you honest, to the point, reviews, travel tips, and information about the destinations that we go to and show you, you don't need an entire week to have an amazing vacation.